Now, we have seen two examples where we, can, we, see, we had seen how to find the period of a function. Now, let's move on to some of the properties of periodic function. Let's say fx is a periodic function with period t. First property is that if fx is periodic function with period t, then cfx is also a periodic function with a period t. You know that, let's say I have a graph of sine of x like this. You know that if I multiply the function with the constant c, what happens is there is a change in the height of this interval, right? If I multiply this using c, which is if c is a positive quantity greater than 1, then c gets expanded. This function gets expanded. If c is less than 1, the function gets contracted, right? Okay. It, so there is a variation in this direction. So as such, there is no variation in this direction. So the period doesn't change. The next property is f of x plus c is also periodic with the same period t. Now again, you know that if I add a constant c to the to x, what will happen is the function will get shifted in this direction. This is a function like this. Adding a constant will just shift this function this side, this side. It will just shift like this. So as such, the period of the function doesn't change. The difference in the length between two points doesn't change. So as such, the period of the function doesn't change. It's t again. The next property is f of x plus minus c is also periodic with the same function, same period, sorry, with t. Now, let's prove this again. Let's say I have a function like this, some function, random function like this. If I add a constant to c to this, what will happen is this function will get shifted in the up or down direction. So as such, there is only a shift in the y direction. There is no expansion or contraction in the y uh, x axis so the period of the function doesn't change it's again the same t okay there's a third property so we can conclude that if the function is multiplied by any constant the period remains the same it's something is added then also the period remains same now let's look at the last property which says that let's say i have a function k of f of cx plus d let's say now if this is done then the period becomes t by mod of c okay because when i multiply the value of x with say c there is an expansion or contraction in the x direction let's say i have a function sine of x the graph is this is pi this is 0 this is 2 pi the graph is like this but if i have a function like sine of 2x then this is pi and this is what this is pi by 2. So the graph has expanded in the x direction by a factor of 2. Sorry, it has contracted in the x direction by a factor of 2. It was 2 pi earlier, now it's pi. So uh, you can see that the period of this function has reduced by a factor of 2. So if I use this formula, it has become, earlier the period was 2. Now I divide it by mod of 2, so it becomes pi. As you can see, the period is pi. So, these were some of the properties of periodic function. Now, let's say, I have a function f1x with period t1. I have another function f2x with period t2. Now, if I have something like, a check x as a of f1x plus b of f2x then the period of this h of x is nothing but lcm of t1 and t2 
so finally we have come to the end of periodic functions now let's end this topic with some one or two examples let's see i have a function f of x given by tan of 3x plus sin of x by 3 what is the period of this function? You know that period of tan x is what? It is pi. Period of sin x is what? It is 2 pi. So the period of, of tan 3x is what? It is pi by 3. As I said, if I multiply by a factor of c, I need to divide by a factor of c in the denominator. If sin of x by 3 is periodic with a period of 6 pi. 2 pi multiplied by 3. Now, to find the period of addition of this two, we need to look at the last property which says if I have a function f of x, which is f1x plus f2x, and this is periodic with t1, this is periodic with t2, then the function fx is periodic with LCM of t1 and t2. So, I need to take the LCM of pi by 3 and 6 pi. So, what is the LCM of pi by 3 and 6 pi? It is 6 pi. So, the period of this function is 6 pi. Now, let us look at an example where we see that the two functions are periodic but their addition is not periodic. Remember, you may get a question in assertion reasoning where it says that let us say f of 1x is positive periodic function, f of 2x is again a periodic function, then whether f of 1x plus f of 2x is periodic or not that that case it can't be true right it's not always true for example let's say i have a function sin x plus frictional part of x i know that this uh, function is periodic with period 1 this function is periodic with periodic 2 pi now since 2 pi is an irrational number 1 is a rational number i can't have an lcm of irrational and rational so lcm of 2 pi and 1 doesn't exist so, I can say that f of x is not periodic. Okay. So, we conclude our last topic on periodic functions. Now, we move on to the tutorial section. Tutorial section of our functions chapter. This section will be solving some 9 to 10 problems. I would suggest you to, first of all, Look at a problem, pause the video, try solving the problem on your own and then see the solution to that problem. Let us start with the first question. The first question, I am asked to find the domain of the function. Which is given by The options are And the fourth option is this question is very simple. It should take you hardly 30 seconds to solve this question. So, to solve this question, we need to look at the property of the square root function, which says that this quantity has to be positive. So, I have the condition 2x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. This gives me x greater than or equal to half. And this gives me x less than or equal to 3 by 2. So, the period of this function or the domain of this function, sorry, is half to 3 by 2. So, the option which is correct is D. Okay. 